what you have in your Jonathan Edwards collection. This happens to be the, a page from the personal account book of Mr. Edwards. And again, you can see the X's where things were paid off. Either he paid someone or someone paid him for services. But this happens to be the personal account book, the account book that would be used as his discretionary fund. And what I mean by that is if he needed to give monies to a member of his uh, congregation uh, because of, of some great need, or it also um, lists household items, um, like thread for Mrs. Uh, Edwards when she would sew dresses or coats or, or his tippet, which was that beautiful collar that she made for him, two-point collar, it's called a tippet. Um, you can see just about here, I'm reading backwards, but just about here it says, Mr. Hopkins for a cake of chocolate. Now, chocolate didn't come to you in little cakes like this. It came in big cakes. And if Mr. Hopkins, who was his friend, uh, Samuel Hopkins, was going to Hartford or Boston, he was asked to stop at the chocolate stop, uh, ch shop. And there was a reason. Not only did Mr. Um, Edwards have a sweet tooth, but he also had melancholia. He had some problems with de depressive moods, moods that went down. So um, he knew a little bit about how that made him feel better. And chocolate makes your endorphins move. That is really interesting. You know, it's like ice cream, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, they would, they'd buy quite a bit of chocolate. There's also some wonderful... Um, household things here, um, 26 feet of what we call Holland, which was this gauzy, beautiful material that women would make dresses out of um, in this period. And they called it Holland because it indeed came from Holland. It came from the Netherlands. And it was quite uh, a, a, um, a thing to, to receive that imported cloth to make things with, and Mrs. Uh, Edwards would do that. She was, she was a, an expert needle worker, and she was also a great seamstress. This is an original letter. Um, it's an, a manuscript item uh, that has three parts to it. This is a letter written to Eliezer Wheelock, who was a kinsman of Mr. Edwards. What I mean by that is he had married into the Edwards family. He was indeed the Reverend Mr. Wheelock of Lebanon, Connecticut at this point in time. He becomes, by the way, the first president of Dartmouth College later on in his life. So he's a pretty important fellow. And after a, a particularly successful revival in 1741, Mr. Edwards sends him this letter. And in the letter, it's, it's three parts, really. The first part has to do with uh, Mr. Wheelock's uh, revival and how successful it was and how, how many people had found uh, salvation. The second part is really interesting because revivals after the, you know, the beginning of the Great Awakening here in Northampton, it was as if Mr. Edwards lit a fire through the entire, you know, the entire Connecticut Valley and up into Connecticut. <clears throat> and everyone wanted a revival. Now, his father had been at East Windsor his entire pastorate. But he did not have a revival, and his people were chafing under that. And Edwards knew it. So when he wrote, he wrote another letter to Wheelock and said, will you please gather a group of young ministers to preach a revival in East Windsor for my, for my father, with my father? And they did, and it was extremely successful. So this is a thank you also. So this is congratulations on your recent revival. This is thank you for bringing revival to my, my father's congregation. But this one, this last part is the most important part. He speaks about uh, Whitfield, George Whitfield, who was the pioneer 
a missionary from England who came to the colonies and set the colonies on fire with his preaching. 1741 was the beginning of troubles for Mr. Edwards, theological troubles with his congregation. And he says here, would that my congregation would listen to me the way they have listened to Mr. Whitfield <laughs> recently. Arrival. Yes. So he was... Arrival in the revival. Yes, yeah. But he yeah. loved Whitfield and um, considered him a great friend. Uh, but my favorite, favorite line from this is when he says to, at the end of the letter, he says to Mr. Wheelock, may you be a burning and shining light for the Lord. That's taken right out of the epistles of St. Paul. Um, and it really shows Edwards's focus, which was the salvation of souls. Now May he, you be a burning and shining light. He was very controversial here in Northampton and mm -hmm. was forced to leave. Did he yes. go on to find success elsewhere as a revival? Yes. He, he, he went on to mm -hmm. Stockbridge, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where he um, wrote his greatest, probably on freedom of the will and uh, on original sin, was written there. I look upon Northampton as a crucible, if you will, almost as if Mr. Edwards was in a blacksmith fire here in Northampton, where he was... He, he was refined here. Um, he was and tested. Tested and refined. Mm -hmm. And because of Northampton, he went on to write some of his greatest theological works. Then, of course, uh, everything was familial for him. You know, he came here to help his grandfather, Solomon Stoddard, um, who was the great and grand master of this entire valley for 60 years of pastorate. Um, it was all familial, you know? Everything that happened to him was familial. His family wanted him to come to rescue his grandfather because his grandfather was getting older. He needed help in his, in, in, in his ministry. Um, he, in the beginning, Edwards was the fair-haired boy of the congregation, truly. But later on, after the death of his grandfather, he and the first revival that he had in 1735. He changed his theological stance from what we call full covenant to halfway covenant. I'm not going to go into that because it, it, it's a little complicated, but it was a, a different theological stance. It, it was very much like Boston's th stance, think Cotton Mather and Increase Mather. Um, so, Having had Solomon Stoddard as their pastor for all those years, and then to shift to a full covenant uh, theology was very difficult for the congregation. They chafed under it. And because of that, um, he couldn't quite convince them over the years that full covenant was the way to go. Uh, and then some certain things happened um, uh, that created stirs in the community, and um, we don't have enough time to go into that. No, you, you told me that uh, many congregations still have a pilgrimage here to oh, visit uh, yes. because of Jonathan Edwards. I see so many people coming to talk to me about Edwards in Northampton. Um, last summer, just as a, an illustration, I had a, a pastor and 40 of his congregants come from Florida. He pastors a church of 3,000 people. They're very much enamored of Edwards. They're a reform church, reform uh, congregational church. And um, I had to show them all the sites. And of course, there aren't many sites left in <laughs> right, Northampton right. Of, of Edwards. But um, I showed him where uh, David Brainerd and, and Jerusha Edwards are buried. Of course, Edwards is not buried here. We have to, you know, tell people that right away. Um, he's, he's buried at Princeton uh, in the old burial ground there uh, because, again, because of familial things, 
His son-in-law, Aaron Burr Sr., the Reverend Aaron Burr Sr., dies prematurely of smallpox. Um, he's called by the, the board uh, of Princeton, what would be Princeton University later on, and um, will you come? You know, the only one who could fill Solomon Stoddard's shoes in Northampton was Edwards, and the only one who could fill Aaron Burr's senior's uh, shoes in Princeton was Edwards. So he's pulled by f family responsibility all the time. Yeah. Uh, and of course, he, um, um, he, be he, he goes to Princeton. There's another uh, outbreak of smallpox. He's, you know, Edwards is the greatest mind of his century. He was a philosopher, he was a scientist, and he was a theologian. Because he was a scientist, because he believed in science, he had um, uh, an inoculation against the smallpox done, but it went awry. And so he, um, uh, he became uh, ill with smallpox and died. Um, sadly. On his deathbed, besides saying some very beautiful things about the Lord, he said this, tell Sarah we have had an uncommon union because not only was the romance there between Mr. and Mrs. Edwards, but she was hand in glove. Think of, think of a hand that goes inside a glove. She fit everything that was necessary for his pastorate to go forward. That's, that's just an incredible story, Lisa, and you tell it yeah. so well.